In this lecture, we will discuss dealing with characters in a string. So in the previous lectures, we have been studying about strings and we have also seen certain string operations. Now here we will talk about dealing with characters in a string. So let's see why do we need this. So there may be cases when we might want to check whether a string contains any white space or change the characters to lowercase or uppercase or see whether a given character is present etc. So these are some use cases where we might want to deal or process characters in a string. So for such use cases, there are certain inbuilt functions that we have in C++ that helps us to process characters in a string. So let's see what they are in this lecture and in the coming lectures, we will take examples making use of these functions. So talking about the functions used for processing characters, here is the first function that we have which is called isAlNum and within parenthesis we have C. So remember that C here represents the character that we are trying to process. So isAlNum returns true if C is a letter or a digit. So from the name itself you can try to understand alnum actually means alpha numeric. So we are checking if the character C that is a variable that we are passing here which is a character is it an alpha numeric character or not. So if it is an alpha numeric character that means if it is a letter or a digit it would return true and it would return false otherwise. So these are some examples if it is like ABC123 and so on it would return true. And if it is some other special characters or a white space or something like that then it will return false. Now next we have is alpha and within parenthesis C. Now is alpha would return true if C is a letter. So we are basically checking if C is an alphabet. Okay, so if it is a lowercase alphabet like this or an uppercase alphabet like this, it would return true. And if it is like a digit or some other special characters, then it would return false. Now next we have is control, is C and T R L and within parenthesis C. Now this one checks if C is a control character. Now control characters are these kind of characters like tab, new line, carriage, return, etc. Now if it is a control character like any one of these, then it would return true and false otherwise. Okay, let's go to the next one. Next we have is digit. Now is digit checks if C is a digit or not. So it would return true if C is a digit. That means if it is a number or a numeric value, then it would return true and false otherwise. Next we have is graph. Now is graph would return true if C is not a space but is printable. That means if C is not a white space and if it is a printable character then it would return true. So for example we can have this kind of letters or numbers. So whatever is printable then that would return true. So that is the use of is graph. Next we have is lower. Now is lower checks if the character is a lowercase letter. So we have lowercase letters like this and if it is a lowercase letter then it would return true and if it is an uppercase letter it would return false. And similarly we have is upper as well. So is upper would check if the character C that we passed here is an uppercase letter. So if it is an uppercase letter like this then it would return true and if it is a lowercase letter then it would return false. Now next we have is print. Now is print checks if C is a printable character. So if C this character is a printable character that means anything that can be printed then it will return true and false otherwise. And next we have is punct P U N C T. Now this checks if the character C is a punctuation character. Now punctuation characters are characters like these exclamation mark, comma, dot, hash, dollar symbol, at the rate symbol and so on. So you can check out for the complete list of the punctuation characters that are counted as punctuation characters and this would check if it is a punctuation character and if it is it would return true and if it is not it would return false. And next we have is space. Now is space would return true if C is a white space. Now it would return true if it is a white space like this and also if it is a new line or a tab. So in these cases also it would return true. Now don't confuse this with the control characters. Here we are actually checking if it is a white space or a new line or a tab. So that is what is space does. Now next we have is x digit. Now is x digit checks if C is a hexadecimal digit. Now we know what are the hexadecimal numbers and we know that it's from 0 to 9 and then for 10 we have A and 11 B and so on till C D E F. 
So we have already briefly taken a look at hexadecimal representation in one of the previous lectures. So if this C is an hexadecimal digit, then this E's X digit would return true and it would return false otherwise. And next we have to lower C. Till now we have been dealing with functions that would return true or false. That means it was checking for something. But here we are actually now trying to convert the character to a different thing. So here you can see to lower would change C to a lowercase character if it is an uppercase letter. Otherwise it leaves it unchanged. So from the name itself we can understand to lower would convert this character C to a lowercase letter. So for example we have uppercase A here it would convert it to lowercase A. Similarly, uppercase B would be converted to lowercase b. And if it is already in a lowercase form, then it would just leave it unchanged. So that is what to lower does. Next, we have to upper C. Now, this would change C to uppercase if it is a lowercase letter. Otherwise, leaves it unchanged. So as you can see, if it is a lowercase letter, it would change it to an uppercase letter like this. And if it is already an uppercase letter, then it would just leave it unchanged. So that is what is done by to upper. Okay, so those were some of the functions that are used for processing characters in a string. So with this, I hope you have got an idea that there are a lot of things that we can do with characters in a string. So in the next lectures, we will take examples and we will see how we make use of these functions in programs to process characters in strings. So I hope this lecture was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.